mercy. In love, you sent your Son, that we might be cleansed of sin and live with you forever. Bless us as we gather to reflect on his suffering and death, that we may learn from his example the way we should go. We ask this through that same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Condemnation is serious. It implies guilt. Jesus is, however, innocent. Yet, as he said many times in his life, your will be done. In the desert, Jesus is tempted three times, but faithful to the will of the Father, Jesus is victorious three times over the tempter, who then leaves Jesus to be ministered to by the angels. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me what you think right and good. Jeremiah 26, 14. The Father sent Jesus to speak the truth to us. Let us listen to the voice of the Lord. The second station. Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Taking up the cross is a personal and a communal act. When our individual strength weakens, as it often does, does it not seem that we cannot continue to bear the cross? Yet, the cross we took up once is with us for the length of our lives. While we carry the weight, no matter our weakness, Jesus and the people around us bear a proportional burden. How else do we explain the need to take up our crosses, to feel the burden of all for whom Jesus took up his cross? Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Isaiah 53, 7. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We know the expression, down but not out. Setbacks, discouraging moments, and even failures are an expected part of life. But so are advances, encouraging times, and our great successes. That Jesus falls is something to which we can relate. Our falls are expected, but so are also our picking ourselves up and moving ahead. Our human will is a wonderful thing and must be based and used in cooperation with God's grace to not only pick up the cross, but to fall and get up again. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my call for help. Psalm 88, 3. If anyone wishes to come after me, let him and her pick up the cross and follow me. The fourth station. Jesus meets his mother, Mary. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The mother of Jesus shows great emotion for her flesh and blood, her only son. This abiding relationship represents compassion. Compassion is a necessary part of feeling the support of others who are around us. Without compassion, we only see distress and trouble without any emotion. Without compassion, we give in to selfishness, which cannot help us or others. Mary shows us a model of compassion and makes herself present to her son and to his agony. This meeting alludes to a great moral support to Jesus. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon was singled out in a crowd, and for what reason he helped Jesus we do not know. Perhaps he showed some sorrow. Perhaps he made himself available to be helpful. Or perhaps it was by chance. But it does not matter because Simon did what was required of him. We might wonder if Simon recognized in Jesus a brigand or a messiah. By the same token, we might ask ourselves how we react to others' difficult and public tasks and trials. Do we step away or do we get involved to simply be of help? The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Veronica is not mentioned in the Bible, but this does not mean that she did not exist and come to offer Jesus a refreshing towel to dry his face, perhaps wiping salt from his eyes. Veronica means true icon or real image. In this sense, Veronica became the real image of Jesus, obeying his command to serve one another. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Matthew 10, 16. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It is said that practice makes perfect. Jesus bore our practice of falling, and by his rising again, he made us capable of attaining perfection in the heavenly realm at what we call the perfect vision that is to be the face to face with god our creator who is perfection itself we fall many times in life yet the promise of eternal life compels us to rise to learn to grow in perfection our suffering has meaning in Christ's own suffering. The eighth station. The women of Jerusalem weep for Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Weeping is many times an expression of deep emotional stress, such as sorrow can be. Some women who saw Jesus on his way to Calvary were apparently moved to tears by what they saw. Their sensitivity to an apparent injustice caused to well up in them tears that revealed their sympathy and compassion for Jesus. He noticed, but told them they will not encounter they will encounter injustice long after Jesus would die on the cross. He does not dismiss their sympathy but encourages them to replicate it every time they face the ugliness of injustice. From Psalm 69. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. The ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Three strikes and you're out. Jesus proves this is not true outside of the diamond. Time and time again, we are offered a rescuing hand, an inviting word, and what a relief to finally heed this endless opportunity. What are we offered from God? Should we not offer to others, to ourselves? From Psalm 40. I have waited and waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry. He drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp. He set my feet upon a rock. He made firm my steps. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you.
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. To lay bare means to be exposed. It usually refers to physical or to spiritual unmasking. Jesus is exposed physically to make his death more humiliating and more so to make it easier for his executioners. His spiritual exposure is a blessing because we learn that Jesus died willingly for us and that forgiveness is assured for those who bear themselves wholly to God's mercy. From Job chapter 1. Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked I shall go back again. They divided my garments among them, and they cast lots for my clothing. The eleventh station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. To be nailed to a cross must be painful, yet so many people have suffered even more excruciating pain. Most people, however, do not choose to suffer. It is cast upon them. Jesus did, however, choose to suffer. He accepted it as a crucial purpose for his life. His suffering alone gives meaning to human suffering, making it possible for us to accept our suffering as something that is not in vain. Jesus made all suffering redemptive because no matter the degree of suffering, he alone suffered for all, not for himself. From Job chapter 17. My spirit is broken, my lamp of life extinguished, my burial is at hand. With Jesus I am nailed to the cross, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The 12th station, Jesus dies on his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All creation shares in immortality. Things with the breath of life stop breathing, and things that are without breath eventually wear to basic matter. Remember, man or woman, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The death of Jesus seems to be a completion, but it is not. While we are all mortal, we share in the immortality of the resurrected Christ, the Anointed One who will one day cause us to rise to unending life. From the Philippians chapter 2. And appearing in the form of man, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even to death on a cross. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all things to me. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the it is difficult to know the emotions of those who actually took the body of Jesus down from the cross. Perhaps it was all in a day's work or perhaps even rushed because of the fall of the Sabbath. Surely some sort of human emotion was exhibited, if not for Jesus, but for the women who were present. More important was the recovery of the body than the removal from the cross. It is they who receive the body who must weep, most especially Mary, who is famously p depicted in the Piata, which means compassion. Here we encounter love as emotion, deep and truly human. The 14th station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The lifeless body of Jesus is locked away from life, and never the two should meet. God the Father says otherwise, for it was to redeem us from our sins that the Son was sent to the world, which means that death would no longer have power. The Father raised the Son from the tomb, leaving it empty, 
to show the world that sin gives way to grace and mortality gives way to eternity. From Ezekiel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will bring spirit into you that you may come to life. If we have died with Christ, we shall live together with him. For Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your passion and death is the sacrifice that unites earth and heaven and reconciles all people to you. May we who have faithfully reflected on these mysteries follow in your steps and so come to share your glory in heaven where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.